What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk through some of the biggest and newest developments inside of the world of Blender add-ons and free resources this week. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Antoine Bagatini, um, the creator of the Bagapi modifier, which we've talked about a bunch on this channel, has rolled out a new rain generator geometry node setup. And basically what this node setup does is it simulates rain inside of your scene using geometry nodes. And so it's fairly complex, but basically the way that it works is it comes with a rain shader, right? So the rain shader works on the ground. And then it also comes with the actual geometry node setup itself, which simulates the rain. And so you can see what this is doing is this is using geometry nodes to actually simulate the rain particles falling and also splashes when they hit the ground. It also comes with a Canon demo file, which you can use in order to demo this. Um, note that for best results, you're gonna to wanna to render this in cycles. If you render it in Eevee, then the splashes aren't gonna work the way that they should. So if I go over to Eevee, see how the result is just different. So that's going to be important, but remember that this is a geometry node setup and you're basically going to have to append it um, in order to get things to work. Now there is a Blender Artist forum post over here. So if you can't get it to work or if, if you have any issues about it, you can definitely ask questions about that on this page. But just another really interesting application of geometry nodes for Blender. All right, so next up, Chip Walters has updated his Eevee and Cycles material system. Um, I think this was originally called Simply Eevee or something like that, but the name has changed. And he's basically got 220 plus materials contained inside of this new setup. Um, so it's got all sorts of different materials inside of it, as well as things like edgeware and other things like that. All right, and so like pretty much all of Chip's stuff, you manage it through kit ops, which you can get for free. But basically the way this works is you can click on the drop down and you can see all of the different materials that he has contained in here. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to take this floor and make it like a concrete. You can just click on the drop down, click on concrete, and then you can add your different materials like this one. So if I click on add material right here, what that's going to do is that's going to apply that material to this floor. So in this case, let's say I wanted to add like a plastic paint, something like that to my model. I can just click on the add material in order to do that. And then if we were to jump over into the shader editor, you can adjust things like the roughness if you decide that you wanna do that. So you can turn that either on or off. And then you can also adjust the amount of the roughness and you can adjust the other things associated with the materials as well. So, so you can adjust things like bump strength and other things associated with the different materials. And so there's a ton of materials that are in here to choose from. So maybe like this granite dark or something like that. There's just a ton of materials built in to choose from right here. And so some of these materials, if you go into the advanced, right here, um, ha have the ability to create like a dirty or worn material. So like, for example, if we were to apply this worn steel in here, then there's settings in there in order for us to apply or in order for us to make this look like worn down steel. And this one takes a little longer to compile like this, but notice how this one is adding like scratches and other things like that. Well, you can adjust those using these settings in here. So you can adjust the color. So let's say we wanted this to be a different color metal or something like that. You can use the slider in order to do that. But then there's also different dirt and wear settings in here, right? So you can adjust the size of the dirt or the scale of the dirt, as well as the strength of that effect. So notice how you bring it down. Um, it's less dirty looking the more you bring it up the more dirty and worn it's going to look. So you can use this to simulate worn materials on your objects, just like this. So um, pretty good size collection of materials contained inside of this. I'll link to it in the notes down below if you wanna check it out. All right, so next up, we've got a cool free demo file from Ben showing us how the shortest pads node can work inside Blender. So um, we've linked to a bunch of Ben stuff in the past before, um, but, and I'll link to this in the notes down below. You can download this demo file that's only gonna work in Blender 3.3, and it's gonna allow you to basically take a look at the settings contained um, inside of Blender for the shortest pads node. So. I can click play on this, but then notice how on the right hand side, I can adjust things like the probabilities as well as other things like the end probabilities in order to adjust how much is generated in here. So let's say I was to pause this for right now and adjust this. Notice how this is adding in additional things where it's testing different paths and other things like that. So you can use this in order to um, really kind of see what that shortest paths node will do. So there's a bunch of different like path modes and other things like that, which are really interesting as well. So as you click through this, notice how there's four different path modes that are going to demo different features contained inside of this. This is actually super, super cool. I'm really excited to see um, more of the things that people are going to be able to do with um, geometry nodes in the future, but this is a great demo file that you can download for free. All right, so next up, 
we've got a free add-on for adding Ivy to objects inside of Blender called Ivy Pen. I'll link to this in the notes down below, um, but you can just type in a zero in here to download this for free. I do recommend, as always, if you can support developers creating tools like this, um, if you can donate something here, that would really be appreciated. But you can also download that for free by typing a value of zero in this box right here. But basically what this is, is a tool for adding Ivy um, to your objects. Can I just say, by the way, it's nice that he typed up something explaining the way that it works down below. Um, it's really nice to see something like this and be able to follow those steps. A video is good, but being able to read through this um, is actually really helpful. All right, so the way this works is you install it. And then the first thing you need to do is click on the append button. Note this only works in 3.3 and above. Uh, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in the things that you need in order to actually generate the ivy. So notice what this does is this brings in a couple curves and then some leaves right here. The leaves are going to be what's actually placed on your object. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the add Ivy button. And so what that's going to do is that's going to take you into a mode where you can draw Ivy on your object just by drawing a curve on the surface. So I can come in here and draw multiple sides to a curve like this. That's going to add Ivy to the object that you have selected. Well, then you can go into the geometry node settings and you can do things like adjusting the density of the branches associated with the Ivy, as well as the density of the leaves. So obviously more leaves is going to be a little harder on your computer. So just be aware of that but you can also adjust things like the maximum size of the leaves that are in here and the minimum size of the leaves um, if you want some randomization. You can also adjust the radius of the branches, other things like that, in order to quickly add ivy to objects in your scene. Note that you can also um, add additional leaves. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to duplicate this and so for this leaf, I'm just gonna create like a yellow material or something like that and apply it to the surface. So something really boring, but notice how this is in this collection. Well, now I have a yellow leaf in here too because it's randomly taking things out of that collection. So you can use this in order to add your own leaves that are going to get applied to this ivy as well. All right, so next up, we've talked about Jesse a bunch of times before, but Jesse's working on a flow map distribution solver with the um, with geometry nodes, which is ridiculous, by the way. Um, he's using it to figure out like where things would flow based on topology and other things like that. That may be coming out on his gum road later on this weekend, but this is just another super exciting and interesting application of geometry nodes inside of Blender. So definitely, if you're not following him on Twitter, make sure that you do that so you can see all the cool stuff that he's creating. All right, and then the angle tool for Blender is a tool that's basically designed for creating corner geometry using a cross section. So it's very similar to the follow me tool inside of SketchUp if you've used SketchUp. All right, and so the angle tool is a pretty simple tool, but what it does is it allows you to take profiles like this one and round a corner with them. So the way this works is let's say that I wanted this to round this corner right here. Well, what I could do is I could select these three faces and then when that tool is installed, you can just do an F3 and I'm just gonna search for the angle tool. So you can create custom shortcuts and stuff, but we're not gonna worry about that. Notice how it gives me an error. So what it's gonna ask me to do is it wants me to select these surfaces, but then also tap the two key to go into edge select mode and we're gonna select an edge. So in this case, probably this one right here. And then what you can do is you can run that angle tool and it's going to allow you to rotate things around that corner. And so there's a couple different ways that you can do this, right? If you just wanted this to be square, you could just um, tap the A key to go into angle mode like this. And then you can type in negative 90 and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that takes that profile and it extrudes it around the corner. You could also though extrude it and then do it in a different mode. So in this case, right, remember I've got the three faces and this edge selected, but then I can run that angle tool by just doing an F3 and searching for angle tool. And in this case, I'm gonna tap the C to go into curve mode. Well, when you go into curve mode, what that's going to do is that's going to make this curve around the corner. And you can scroll your mouse up and down in order to add segments in here. So you can use this again to quickly turn that corner just like this. And in this case, we could make something a little more rounded. And then we can just type in negative 90, hit the enter key, right here. And so this tool has some other interesting applications as well. Like let's say, for example, you had a surface like this one and you wanted to extrude it and then make it come to a curve right here. So you could select this face and then select this edge and activate that angle tool. 
And so you could use this in order to make shapes like this turn corners or other things like that. So if you're modeling any kind of steps, this could be an interesting tool for that kind of thing. All right, so I'll link to everything that we talked about in the video in the notes down below. I'd love to hear from you on what you think about these tools and developments, other things like that. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.